Hello guys, Colonel reality, Mini here. During most normal flight maneuvers, we feel very little gravitational force on our bodies. But as we start flying the aircraft in combat situations where we're trying to get maximum performance from it, that's when things go wrong. The aircraft is designed to take high G loadings. But the limiting factor is our own ability to take those same G loads as we make those maneuvers. And these are self-induced G-loads that come by pulling on the stick too much. This leads to tunnel vision and blackout and loss of consciousness. And suddenly losing consciousness in the middle of a dogfight doesn't bode well. And it takes several seconds for us to regain consciousness and come back to be able to control the aircraft. Unfortunately, sometimes recovery is too late. During World War I, they first noticed this problem and they called it aerial fainting. The study of aviation medicine was in its infancy, and they had no idea why it happened. During the Battle of Britain, several fighter pilots succumbed to this problem. Sharp turns can induce a loss of consciousness when gravity pulls blood towards the lower extremities, carrying oxygen away from the brain. After about five seconds of pressure, vision is progressively lost from peripheral vision to central vision, commonly known as tunnel vision. When the blood flow is allowed to resume, vision is smoothly and rapidly recovered. But cerebral failure and recovery is much less graceful and predictable. And after about five seconds of blood flow stoppage to the brain, G-lock occurs suddenly and lasts from 10 to 30 seconds. This is very well demonstrated in Tom Scott's video. As we increase the G that Tom is exposed to, the blood's going to be pushed down into his feet and he's going to have to work really hard to push that blood back up to feed oxygen to his brain to keep him conscious. And in real life, we would be expecting that person to be flying an aircraft uh, whilst doing that. I'm getting a little bit of grey out, I can't quite see. Ah. We teach the anti-G straining manoeuvre which composes of two separate parts. First of all, muscle tensing, so both the buttocks and the legs, squeezing the blood vessels to try and get the blood back up into the chest and the head. But also the second part is a breathing manoeuvre uh, which uh, increases the strain in the chest, directly increasing the blood pressure to the great vessels in the chest and keeping him conscious. And when you lose blood pressure to your head, you could even lose consciousness, and we term that G-induced loss of consciousness, or G-lock. <coughs> then, when consciousness is regained, it's usually accompanied by a brief seizure-like activity and a period of confusion which lasts about 12 seconds. And it is during these 12 seconds that the aviator is unable to function effectively. You're completely aware of what's going on, but you have no control at all. Blimey! I lost everything there! Wow! G-lock in itself is not dangerous, but the real point is when you G-lock, you're flying an aircraft. So if you're not able to fly that aircraft, I'm, I'm sure you can appreciate that that is a, a real problem. So how does the squadron leader's advice equate to us in the game? Well, ideally, we want to be able to maintain just on the edge of consciousness by adjusting the pressure on the stick. We know that if we go too far, we'll black out. But with practice, we can bring ourselves into the right position to hit our target. Fully aware and fully in control of the aircraft. You can see clearly the tunnel vision effect as we seek the maximum performance from our aircraft and ourselves. And if you're going to make rapid maneuvers at low level, you better know what you're doing. A good rule of thumb to follow is never to do it in the vertical, unless you've got plenty of altitude. If you go into a full G-lock in a climbing turn or a horizontal turn, you're going to be able to recover. Not so in a descending turn. And finally, we want to be able to come out of the tunnel vision situation to take the pressure off the stick so that it does not affect our ballistics when we open fire. 
and those skills are covered in this video. Understanding the management of a G-lock will help to keep you alive and dangerous for just a little bit longer. All the best. Cheers. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, found it helpful, please like it or subscribe. Or if there's another topic you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment. Thank you, guys.